Hi guys. Um, based on yesterday's class, there was this aspect where I was talking about the animation from uh, UI Land's uh, website. Let's take a look at the website. So we did a bit of recording on that part in class, but guess what? Uh, the recording got interrupted, which I did not uh, realize in time. Uh, we ended up not having this particular animation, like the prototyping aspect. We did not have it in the previous recording, so I have that deleted. So what I'm about to do right now is to recreate this I've recorded and share with you guys. So you can just visit it and learn a couple of new things there. So let's jump in and get started. So let's go back to Figma. Now this is the screenshot already I took from the website. So what I'm going to do first is to quickly recreate what we have here in Figma. So let's draw a frame. I would have shift so we can draw a perfect rain, a perfect square frame size. Let's uh, make the dimension 1000 by 1000. You can also adjust it from our properties panel on this uh, top right side. So I'm going to move our screenshot inside of this frame. And uh, what we're going to do next, sorry, what we're going to do next is to draw out what we have here. So Let's first of all draw all the circles, the inner circles, the outline, and the one for the logos. So we press O on our keyboard and we draw our first circle. So I'll start with the smallest one we have here. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're actually trying to create. So I'm going to scale it down a bit so we get the actual size we have in this example. So next I'm removing the fill, applying stroke to it. What's the thickness of our stroke? zoom okay i think three is fine based on the sample we are following then the next thing for us is to make duplicate and also adjust accordingly so i'm going to do a ctrl c ctrl v the reason i'm doing that is because it's going to copy it and paste it in place i don't want to make use of the uh ctrl d let's take for instance if i do uh command d it can sometimes displace it and uh, place it somewhere else but i want it in the actual position so i'm gonna do ctrl c and ctrl v and uh, let's scale up using the scale tool yeah and that looks perfect ctrl c ctrl v let's scale up a bit to remember the times you need to hold on shift you know when you're scaling up ctrl c ctrl v again now, one thing I noticed based on what we are doing right now is the thickness of our stroke is getting bigger. And the reason for that is because we are making use of the scale tool. If I didn't make use of the scale tool to increase the size, it's not going to affect the thickness. Well, anyways, here's what we can do. Let's select all the uh, circle layers for the stroke. Let's go back to our properties panel and give it the same value we started with, which is 3. So we've already adjusted it, though that a bit of um, slight uh, uh, variations from the, the deviation, sorry. So let's just quickly adjust it and make it look nice. So I'm just quickly going to scale this. So I think we're done with that. Yeah, we have an extra here, let's delete that. So this we are fine. The next thing we like to do is to include the other information we have here. Uh, Right now, we're just going to use the ellipse tool to put the, you know, represent it using the circle. We don't need to do, uh, start adding the logos and all of the information. But if you are trying to do the same thing again, feel free to add our uh, logos. And this is just a particular example of what we want to achieve. That's why I'm skipping some steps. So I'm making it duplicate by holding down Alt or Option on my keyboard, then click and drag. So that I'm able to make uh, this type of uh, topic piece really fast. And then the last uh, logo we have on our example. So let's just move it this way. And I guess this is uh, fantastic already. Uh, let's adjust the outline from this uh, stroke. I think I would like to select it from there. I think, yeah, then change the color to white. That's like we have here. Then for the, let's group them together and call this a uh, stroke and call this one a uh, circle. We'll group them together and call it circle. The reason I'm just grouping them together is just for easy identification. You can either group it or use uh, the frame tool, but don't use auto layout. Auto layout is going to affect 
the arrangement of what we've done yet so far. So now that we've done that, let's also adjust the colors of our circle. So we have that done already. Now we can remove the image. Let's remove the image from the frame of where we are you know, trying things out. Yeah, this we forgot to change the color. So we can just quickly change that. Now for the frame itself, let's give it a feel of blue, just like we have in this example. Now we can hide this for now since we will be working with it. Now this is the frame of the animation we created. Let's call this animation. So we are ready to create this. Now another thing I would like you to take note of there is yeah we have the main frame which is called animation. We also need to put this inside another frame. Let's um, select the two layers and do Shift Control or Command G. I'm sorry Shift. Now that, that's an Alt Control G or Option Command G. So it's going to place this entire content inside a frame. Let's just call this the design element or just content. So right now we can align this to the center of our frame itself to make it look aligned. And uh, I guess this is ready. The only thing I'm taking note here is uh, the way this circle, it looks closer to this border compared to this other one. But I can understand because of the logo in terms of the arrangement, that's why it's looking that way anyways let's just proceed with the animation we get a good hang of it and we can come back to either fixing it or improving on it so the next thing i would like to do now is to make uh, duplicates of this particular frame so i'm going to hold an option or alt on my keyboard click and drag uh we need a uh, total of four frames so i'm going to make three duplicates now the next thing i'm going to do is this first particular frame inside this animation frame is at zero we want our animation the rotation to happen at a clockwise direction so the next one we're going to rotate it you know in the clockwise direction and uh what we have is a uh, minus 90. so let's just type minus 90 here to have a perfect one so the next one is going to be 180 and uh the last one let's rotate so we can see the value we get in which is going to be also uh, 90. So let's just increase 90 here too. So if you take note of it, you can see where our starting point from here it comes down here, which goes on to this point here, and uh, the last one coming down to this position. And we're already through with our uh, design for the frame. So the next thing is to create a component. Now, the essence of creating it as a component is for us to be able to have the prototype interaction. You know they're all in a frame and we make it a component it's just going to be one element and we'll be working with the auto layout option so let's click on create component set now what create component set does is that it's going to have all the design elements into just one component set so it sees it as a component set so if i click on create component set you can see everything is now under the umbrella of the animation so we have our four variants <coughs> So let me zoom in to this first one. Now I've selected it. Now I'm going to go to prototype. On the prototype panel, you know, we will now come back to our frame. We click on this particular node. The connector will be created and we'll link it up to this, yeah, to the next frame. So we'll go to the interaction and we'll change it to after delay. What we are going to be working with for this particular animation is just after delay majorly. Then we'll set the animation to one milliseconds for the after delay. It changes to the next uh, variant that we have there. For smart animate, we leave it as smart animate and we leave it as linear. Let's make this uh, two seconds. So that's uh, 2000 mini seconds. Then we'll go to the next one, so select the frame, use the connector, change it to after delay, set it as one mini second. Uh, we also leave it as linear. Yeah, it should still have the previous settings. So we don't need to make any changes here anymore. So let's move on to the next one, create the connector. Link it up, changes to after delay, set it to one millisecond again. And the last one, we're going to link it up to back to the first one. So you understand how the entire interaction will. So we make this one millisecond and uh, the smart animate is already set. So basically what happens is this comes to this point, it turns to this point, turns to this point, then goes back to the first one. So it creates a form of a loop of uh, interaction that starts from the beginning and go back to the, uh, starts from the beginning, gets to the end. Go back, go back to the beginning again. So it's some sort of an infinite loop. So let's create a frame. 
let's go back to our design layer so i'm just gonna make a copy from here hold down alt or option on your keyboard click and drag and we are through with this so right now i'm gonna apply a few to this particular frame so we can have the entire background you know as a blue so we have this already now the next thing we're going to do is to come back to our prototype you can have the starting point or we can just press play it so it will play our prototype for us and we can have a good look at it so let's see what our prototype comes up with it's loaded right now and voila we have the animation working so for every two seconds it's going to change to the next room and the next room and the next room and uh, this is kind of like great so i'm sure we learned a couple of uh, new things there that we can actually uh, apply in our own animation for whatever design we like to uh, come up with so if you notice this animation feels like it's uh, like a blob animation like it's floating and that's because of the uh, arrangement the size of the frame we were working with if you notice here let's go back to this frame we have here so for the content let's zoom in again you can see this space we have here so it's because the space doesn't feel like perfect let's check the size of our um, frame you can see it's it's 55 five by 905 so the height is kind of like higher what we can do is to adjust the width and the height so it has like a perfect shape now one trick I would do here right now is to click and drag this up to this uh, point where we have the stroke so the entire frame is the width of this uh, particular stroke so remember the clip content is not on so it's not going to hide the entire uh, content to have the design elements so right now I'm just going to rearrange this to fit inside the frame to make it a perfect um, to make, put it in a perfect position so right now this is what we have so we're going to do the same thing for this frame also let's come down here the content click and drag now we could have done this right from the start before we created the entire animation but i wanted us to see the issue that can arise when we create one or two things in our design so let's do for the last one the content where i just decided i'm sure they have uh, the same width and height like you have here so and uh, i guess we're true so if we come back to these our design and we go to the prototype again let's go back to our prototype the print mode so you can see now it does it feel like a blob animation where it feels like it's moving in your more to go in a floaty direction now it has it like a perfect uh floating animation i guess we've uh, learned something new that time some of the issues we experienced are actually before us so we just need to like you know uh troubleshoot it and detect it